Hi everyone, welcome back to Swedish Plant Guys. We've had a lot of questions from you subscribers, which is so much fun and we try to read all of them. But one of the things we've gotten question about is when are you going to make a video about Ficus lurata or the fiddle leaf fig in English. In Swedish we actually call it fiul ficus, uh, which has the same meaning. Today is that day. Uh, of course, we're going to try and do everything for you, our subs subscribers. And today you're going to get all you need to know about the fiddle leaf fig, which I have here next to me. And uh, the reason for the name is, of course, these gigantic nice leaves, which looks like a, it has a violin shaped form. That's why we call it the fiddle leaf fig. Uh, and this plant is native to uh, Africa, mostly Western Africa, but it's a tropical plant and it, it, uh, it is in the rainforest. So we have to have that in consideration all the time when we talk about this plant. Where does it come from? Because uh, how we manage it has to be as close to that as possible. As usual, we will divide this up into four parts. You have the purchase, the planting, the placement, and the care of the plant. So if you want to skip forward, you can. And if you like these types of videos, then please don't hesitate to subscribe to our channel. And don't forget to hit that bell as well, so that you get notifications every time we put up something new, which we try to do as often as possible. And if you have a specific plant you want us to make a all you need to know video about, don't hesitate to make that note for us. We, we read every comment that you make for us. So beginning with the purchase, when you go out to buy a fiddle leaf fig, there are a couple of things you have to consider. First is that, of course, you want to have a very nice lush fiddle leaf, leaf fig, fig with as big leaves as possible. However, you should know that there are a couple of different types of fiddle leaf figs. You have the normal, the usual one that is called Ficus lurata, and which I have here next to me. And this is the one with the really big leaves like this one. Dark green uh, and with a nice lush uh, glow to it, to, to all of the leaves. But you have another variety that is called the Ficus lurorta bambino. And bambino is, I think, Italian, which means baby. So you have that one here. Now this is just, this is not a small version of this big Ficus lurorta next to me. This is actually a variety of the Ficus lurorta, uh, the bambino. And what makes this, what separates this from the usual type is that the leaves are going to be, be small all the time. They never get to be really, really big, uh, even when the plant is big. Now I have a big plant of the uh, Bambino variety here next to me on the other side, and the leaves doesn't get much bigger than this. Now if we compare this leaf to this leaf, you can see that there is a huge difference, almost twice the size. So the first thing you have to consider when buying this plant is, do I want the normal Ficus lurata or do I want the Bambino variety? Because you can get both of them. And also another thing is that you should look at the plant, the, the entire plant. You want to have a Ficus lurata that has as much leaves as possible. If you have a poor quality of a Ficus lurata, you usually only, even if it's big like this one next to me, maybe you only have half the leaves on it. That usually means that it's of a poorer quality. Uh, so you want as many leaves as possible because this is a very difficult plant to regenerate and to make thicker and uh, more lush with more leaves. So the leaves you get from the beginning needs to be as many as you can. And also look inside of the stem or the trunk here. 
you want to get a ficus lorata that has the smallest size in between two leaves. When, when the grower grows this plant, uh, they can grow it very fast. And when it grows really fast in the greenhouse, you can get a really big space in between the two leaves. And you won't get as many leaves as if, you, if it stands a little bit longer in the greenhouse and doesn't get that much nutrients, not that much sunlight. It doesn't grow as fast because then you get a smaller space in between the leaves. And thereof, when the, when, the, when the plant reaches that size that it's about to be selled, you're going to have more leaves on the plant. So look for a plant that has as many leaves as possible. Now, there is also a difference between the normal Ficus lorata and the Bambino in this point, because usually the Bambino has a lot more leaves than the normal Ficus lorata has. Um, the leaves are smaller, but you also get a more compact look of the plant and a lot more leaves. But even if you buy this type of plant, I've seen varieties, I've, I've seen specimens that, that only have maybe half the leaves that this plant has, but it's the same size. That usually means that the grower has been very, it, it, has, it has been growing very, very fast in the greenhouse. And you don't want that type of plant. You want it to have as many leaves as possible. Now, another, another thing when you buy a, this type of plant, uh, you have to look at the leaves as well. Because this plant is really, really hard to get new leaves. And all the new leaves are only going to come in the top of the plant. There is never going to be a new bud in between these two leaves uh, and it's going to start to grow a new leaf here. That's not going to happen. It's only going to grow up here. So if something happens to a leaf down here, you have a problem because you're not going to be able to rectify that. So look at the leaves and look so that they don't have any type of damage anywhere on the plant. This is a tropical plant, which means it needs quite a lot of water, but also a very high humidity. And if it's been standing somewhere where there is, it's very dry in the air, it will get what we call mechanical damage. What it means is that the plant is not able to get all the water it, it needs all the way out to these big leaves. And what's going to happen is that you get uh, brown spots on the leaves that dry out completely because it, 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 does, it, it can't get all the water out into the leaves. If the plant has this type of damages already when you buy it, you have a big problem. So it needs to be almost perfect when you buy it. It's not like when you buy a Dracaena that it, 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 it doesn't matter what it looks like because you, you can cut it, it will regrow, you can make it look better. You can't make the Ficus lorata look better, at least not easily. It will take a long, long time. So the specimen you buy needs to be perfect when you buy it. And as always, when we buy a plant, you need to check the roots. Always, always check the roots. So I thought, because this is so heavy, I'll try on a little bit smaller plant. Uh, always try and feel a little bit around the pot and Try and see if you can take the pot off and take a look at the, at the roots. With the Ficus lorata, you want it to look like this. You want the soil to stay in place. If the soil should start to fall, it means that you don't have enough root system for this plant and usually means it's not of a good quality. But if it looks like this, you have roots almost everywhere, they're, they're even trying to get out of the pot, that's good. You want this. However, this plant needs to be repotted when you get home, but that, we will take that later on. So look at the roots. Uh, usually the Ficus lorata roots are not like many other varieties. They're, the roots are not white and uh, 
they, they are a little bit more brown or yellowish and that's not a problem it's just the way the roots look you could have it's only the the very newest roots the ones that are growing right now that are white the uh, when they get a little bit older the roots they turn a little bit brown so it should look just like this now if you purchase this plant uh, i would recommend you to only buy this plant actually in summertime or spring or summertime and the reason is that this is a tropical plant. It, it's used to heat, it's used to high humidity, it's used to moisture. If you buy this plant in wintertime, make sure that you protect it when you take it home. It doesn't want to be anywhere near uh, 10 degrees Celsius or lower. If it is in that temperature for a longer period of, a period of time, you're going to get damage on the plant. It's not going to feel well. If you took this plant when it's minus degrees outside, when you have zero or below Celsius outside, if you just take it home and maybe walk home with it, what's going to happen when you get home is that it's going to lose all of the leaves. It's just going to drop them straight off. That's how sensitive it can be to cold. So if you buy it in wintertime, make sure that where you buy it, they wrap it in plastic or in paper or something and make sure that you take it home in a heated car or something and that it goes as quickly as possible. You have to consider that when buying this plant if, because it's, it's quite sensitive. Okay, moving on to planting. When you get home with your ficus, if it's the normal Lirota or if it's the Bambino variety, it doesn't matter. You can, you, you're going to do the same with it. Uh, I usually recommend that you repot it straight away because if you have bought a good quality plant, the roots look like this. Uh, they are surrounding the entire pot that it comes in. So you should repot it and when you repot it, Pick a pot that is a couple of centimeters larger than the one you have when you bought it. Don't make it too big because even if this is a plant that wants quite a lot of water, if you repot this in a too large of a container or pot, what's going to happen is that the soil is going to get so wet and it's going to be wet over a long period of time that it can hurt the plant. But if you repot it just a little bit bigger, like this, even if you give it a lot of water, that water is going to evaporate quite quickly. So you won't damage the root because it's wet too long. So make sure that when you repot the ficus, you repot it a little bit bigger, and then a couple of years, maybe two years later, you repot it again and again and again, and so on. So make sure that you always add a couple of centimeters to the diameter of the pot that you planted in. Now the soil can be almost any type of soil, but I recommend a soil that is capable of holding a lot of water, but also drains a little bit. So normal planting soil is almost the best choice because it has a little bit of clay in it, but it also has uh, quite a lot of organic material that will mean that it gets quite a lot of drainage in the soil as well. So just, just use normal high quality soil, planting soil, when, when you repot it. And when you repot it, try and do like this. If, if you repot it in a, in a pot like this that has holes in the bottom, usually then you maybe plant the, put this in a larger closed container. If you do that, then it's fine, because then you can control the water. When you give it water, the water will go through and go out in the bottom. You will see in the outer pot that there is water in the pot. Always make sure to take out that excess water, because the roots do not want to stand in water. If they stand in water, you will get damages on the leaves. And like I said before, when you start to get damage on the leaves, that's not good because you can't rectify that. Uh, but if you plant it, replant it straight away in a closed container, make sure that you have something in the bottom 
that can drain out the water and, and so that the, all of the access water will be down in the pot but not with the roots. Now that can be some gravel you get from outside or you have the lake uh, variety, uh, small uh, lake balls, so you, have, you can have use pumice or something in the bottom of the pot so that when the water sips through it will go down into the gravel and not stand with, together with the roots. The Fergus Loata is very good so after a while it's going to start to send down roots to that gravel where you have the water and those roots will become so-called water roots. They can survive down in that water but if you take this plant and stand it in a couple of centimeters of water the plant will die because these roots are not uh, water roots but you can create those. So if you plant it in a closed container make sure that you do something about the drainage so you can get the water away from the roots. Okay moving on to placement. Now you have gotten your Ficus Loata home and you have repotted it because it needed to be repotted where do you put it? Now I've seen a lot of people placing this plant completely wrong because usually when you get it home and you get this big nice uh, Bambino variety for instance uh, and then you place it maybe next to your television a couple of meters into your living room it's not going to like that placement because this is a ficus that needs a lot of light. You have to, I'll say it again, you have to place this plant somewhere close to a window where you get a lot of light. What happens when you take this home and you place it next to your television, maybe three meters into the room or four meters into the room, is that after a couple of weeks you notice that some of the leaves are just falling straight off. Nothing else is happening, the leaves are just falling off. And this is the plant's way of telling you that you have placed me in the wrong place. You have to replace it. And that is also a thing with the Ficus Lurata. Uh, be very careful about replacing this plant. Find a place for it that is very light, so next to a window somewhere where it gets a lot of light, and then leave it there. If you want to move it, then wait until spring or summer when it gets very much, a lot of light, when it starts to grow and it's really in its best shape, then you can move it. If you move this plant during fall or winter when it's dormant, when it's, uh, when it's stopped growing and it's resting, you will get the same thing as I said before. If you move that plant, a couple of weeks later you will see that the leaves will start to fall off because it's sensitive to be moved during its dormant period and that period is during fall and winter. So leave it alone during fall and winter. If you have to move it, do it in spring or summer. And also when you place it next to a window uh, it, it can tolerate direct sunlight. So if you get a couple of hours of sunlight into that window that's fine but never place it in a window that has sunlight all day because the leaves will get burnt. Uh, you, 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 you can almost imagine that yourself you have a big leaf like this there is a lot of water that has to be taken out to this leaf to keep it like this and uh, when the sun is standing here all day it gets really hot a lot of that water will start to evaporate out of the pores on the leaf. So even if you have a lot of water for the plant, the plant will not be able to keep that water inside of the plant. It will evaporate straight out into the air. So it wants a lot of light but not direct sunlight for a very long period during the day. So a little bit is fine but if you have to have it somewhere where you know that there is a lot of light all day, a lot of sunlight, direct sunlight all day, try and shade it with a curtain or something during the worst parts of the day when it's the hottest. So just shade it a little bit and make sure that it can get a little bit rest from the, all that heat. 
Another thing, because this is a tropical plant, it grows in the rainforest. Uh, as I said before, it loves wet conditions. And inside of our homes is everything but wet conditions. It's very dry. And especially up here in Sweden, in wintertime, we have really, really dry air inside. And that is not good for the Ficus lirata. You can notice that you can get brown uh, spots on the leaves. And usually that is because you have a very, very dry environment for it. You can help it by just spraying it with water. But you have to do that maybe once, at least once a day to make that work. Uh, another thing is that if you can't do that, uh, then try and get the optimal placement for this plant, which is as light as possible without direct sunlight, close to a window, but maybe not close to the radiator. Because there you have that heat, which is good, but it's the dry heat that comes from the radiator. So a lot of light away from the radiator, you understand yourself. It's not easy. So you, may, you maybe, maybe you have to try some different placements before you get it just right. But try and follow these instructions and you will get the best results. Another thing about the placement is also when you put it close to a window and you know that this is a window that I open a lot. It can also be a problem for this plant because when it gets a little bit colder during the evenings, uh, if you open that window and it gets a cold draft on the plant, it can also react. And like I said before, it usually re reacts by losing the leaves or getting brown spots on it. And either way, you have a problem because it takes a long time to get the ficus lirata to get, look good again. So try and place it well and avoid almost everything in your house. No, just kidding. But try and do all these things and you will get the best results. Moving on to care of the plant. Uh, as I've hinted a lot uh, previously in this video, uh, it's difficult to make this plant feel very, very good, to thrive and grow and become really large. But that being said, this is not a difficult plant to care for. If you can find a good spot in your home for this plant that it settles in, then you have a very easy to care for plant. So the placement is really important, but when you notice that, ah, my plant is feeling good in this spot, leave it there, and then you have a very easy to care for plant. Now, like I said before, this is a tropical plant. It, it uh, grows in the rainforest, which means that it wants a lot of water. Uh, so never let the ficus lirata dry out completely. It wants to be a little bit moist all the time. If you give it too much water, like I said before, if it stands in water, the roots are going to get damaged and it's going to die. But it wants to be moist all the time in the soil. Never let it dry out. Just use your finger and feel the soil. When the soil starts to go from wet to, we call it cold or moist, then it's time to give it a little bit more water again. Because it, you do not want it to get dry. So that perfect place just in between wet and dry, you have that cold. Usually the, the soil just feels a little bit cold or a little bit moist. Then it's time to water it again. Uh, how much is difficult to say exactly? Because it depends if you have this size this size or this size of a plant. But if you always use your finger and feel the soil and when it gets cold or moist, it's time to give it some more water again. Now I recommend you to give nutrients to this plant during the growth period and not during the dormant period. And you have a growth period when, when winter goes over to spring and you get more light, you get longer days, 
and you get a warmer and higher humidity in the air, all, all, uh, also inside, then it's going to start to grow. So during spring and summertime, you have the growing period. During that time, this plant needs, needs you to add some nutrients. I always recommend to add the nutrients to the water when you water it. Uh, and always, always follow the instructions on the nutrients bottle that you buy because you never want to add more or less than what they recommend. The nutrients is in the form of salt. So if you add more nutrients, you're just adding more salt to the water. And you can understand that if you get too much salt in the water, it's going to be a problem for the plant. But just the right amount of salt is going to be perfect for the plant. So always follow the instructions, otherwise you can get into trouble. And do that at least once a month during the entire growth season. So you have during spring and summer, at least once a month, you add the nutrients to the water when you water it. If you water this plant well and uh, you've given it some nutrients, it's going to start to grow. It's quite a slow grower, but if it feels really good, it's, it can produce a lot of leaves per season, which means that it's going to become very big and you're going to have to cut it. Now, if you want to cut your ficus lorata, uh, then I recommend you to do that during springtime. A lot of the indoor plants we have, you can almost cut any time of the year because uh, you, it, since it, it has a, uh, the environment we have inside, uh, that's not usually a problem. But however, the ficus lorata is a little bit sensitive to this. So I recommend you to cut it during springtime because you cut it when it's getting ready to explode. It's great getting ready to, to grow. And when you cut it, you cut off a lot of the nutrients that it's pushed out into the new buds. But it has that excess nutrients. It wants to continue to grow. And all that energy is going to go to the new buds. It's going to create new buds and make it want to grow. If you cut it during wintertime when it's dormant, it's not going to die. Nothing will happen to the plant, but it's not, it's not ready to grow. So what's going to happen if you cut it during winter time is that you won't get a lot of buds uh, and it will not grow very fast because it's dormant. It's not, nothing is happening. So you want to cut it when it's getting ready to really start to grow. And then you will get the most amount of buds and the biggest chance of getting a very nice looking ficus lorata. Another tip for you is that, as, as I said before, the a big problem is the humidity that you have in your home. At least here in Sweden, where we have a quite cold climate, we have very dry air inside. Now you can spray it with some water and maybe you do, do that once a day if you can. Uh, but what you also can do is that you can use a wet cleaning cloth, like a, a microfiber cloth that you have for cleaning. Wet that up. Uh, and just dry off the leaves as often as you uh, can uh, and feel like because this will also help this plant to get, raise the humidity but also it will help it to get, a, get rid of all the um, dust from the air because it is a, it's big leaves, a lot of dust is going to settle on the leaves and that is going to hinder the photosynthesis. So even if you have it in a very light spot, if you have a layer of dust on top of the leaf, it's almost like uh, you should you had blinds in front of the plant. It's going to hinder the photosynthesis inside of the plant. So dry that off as often as you can to help the plant to feel as good as possible. Just a wet fiber cloth and dry it off. If you ever see your ficus lorata uh, and the leaves are not standing up like this. You can see all of the plants we have here, the leaves are standing upwards. If it starts to look like this, it's starting to hang downwards. 
Usually it's one out of two, two things. The first can be that you have got, it, it has gotten to be too dry. So there, there is not water for, for the plant. So it's starting to hang like this. That's easy to do something about. You just add a little bit more water, but not too much. So it shouldn't stand in water like we said before, but add a little bit more water. But it can also be that it's not satisfied in the, with the placement that you put it in. So that can also be sh showing you that by hanging a little bit like this. So what I usually do if a, if, if a ficus lorata is where the leaves are hanging like this, make sure that you move it to a better place, a little bit lighter, uh, a little bit uh, more humidity, if that's possible, long way from a radiator, and add a little bit more water. And you will see that over a period of a couple of weeks, the leaves will start to look like this again. Then you know you've succeeded. So, uh, and also, what can happen, it can also look like this, if you have it in a place where you walk through quite a lot you move, you touch the plant like this all the time. It will also get a lot of mechanical damage. Where you touch it a lot, it will get brown spots like this. Uh, and the fact doesn't like that at all. So if you have, a, have it in a place where you know that you are very often touching the plant, make sure that you move it a little bit so you're not touching it anymore. Otherwise you can get brown spots that you can't take away. It's always going to be on that leaf. Uh, and like I said before, if, if you start to lose the leaves in the bottom of a ficus lorata, then you have a problem because all the new leaves are going to grow up there. So you can't get new buds down here. If, uh, so the only way to make sure that the ficus lirota looks good again, you would have to cut it all the way down here to make it regrow down here and make new leaves along the way. Uh, that is why you have to be so careful with this plant and m make sure that it looks fine all the time because if you start to get trouble, you get really bad trouble. As usual, we have to talk, when we talk about the care of the plant, we have to talk about pests. Uh, luckily, it's very rare that you get pests on the ficus lorata. However, if you have, haven't given it the right amount of water, if it dries out a little bit too much in between every watering, it can get pests, and usually it's mites. And the problem with mites is that they are so small that we can't see it with the naked eye. So we only notice them when there are millions or billions of them on the plant. Now usually mites always attack the juiciest uh, leaves on the plant and the juiciest leaves are always the latest ones, the new ones, the baby ones. Uh, so keep an eye always keep an eye on the top leaves and make sure that they always look good because if you see something there, if something is happening, if the green nice lush color is starting to turn and get another shape, get, get another color like a little bit of yellow or if something is wrong up here but you can't see it anywhere else on the plant then that is a signal that you might have a pest problem and usually it's mites. Mites are easy to get rid of. Uh, you can just buy, uh, buy some, some type of pesticide, follow the instructions. Usually it just takes like two sprayings of this pesticide uh, uh, and then you get rid of the mites. But if you don't want to use pesticides, you can use a, a, a uh, you can use water. You could, could, if it's in the summertime, you could take this plant outside and you can, you can rinse it off with a hose. Because what happens when you rinse it hard with water is that the mites just gets knocked off the plant. However, 
the eggs does not. The eggs are attached to the leaves, so they will not get knocked off. So you knock off all the, all the mites that are active, and then you put it inside again. Next day, you have hundred thousands of new mites that have hatched and are ready to start eating on your plant again. But if you do this every day for around two weeks, you take it outside, you rinse it off, you take it inside every day for two weeks, you will get rid of all the mites. So if you don't want to use pesticides, this is the way to go. However, do not do that in winter time uh, because uh, this plant does not want to be moved, it does not want to be cut, it does not want you to do anything with it in winter time. So if you get pests in the winter time, I recommend you to use uh, the method with a pesticide and just spray it. Usually it takes two sprayings. Can you, can you dry off the eggs uh, from the leaf? Yes, you can, but not, you will never get 100%. So if you take a microfiber cloth, uh, rinse it in a little bit of water, and you dry off the leaf, and you add a little bit of um, weight to when you, when you dry it off, you will get off even more than when you rinse it outside. So you can help the plant by doing that, but you will never get 100%. And since the mites multiply I think a couple of times a day, they will get back to the plant very, very easily. So you have to follow this, that you rinse it off every day for two weeks. Then usually they're completely gone. But you can help them, of course. Now one of the last, time, the last things I want to show you is that all ficuses bleed. They have a white they bleed with a white substance uh, and this substance is uh, for some people that have a tendency to be allergic to, to uh, it can be cats, dogs or, or if you have a tendency, if you have allergies, this uh, substance can uh, make you, uh, make, it can make you get a, an, an allergic reaction. So if you know that you have allergies, be very careful when dealing with a ficus plant uh, and especially if you know that it's bleeding and it will bleed every time you cut it. It can also bleed if you happen to go past it and accidentally knock off one of the leaves. It will bleed from that point. Uh, so if you know that you are allergic just keep away from it, let it heal from itself. Uh, I'm not allergic to anything, uh, but so I, I don't have a problem with it. I can work with a ficus for a couple of hours and not get anything. But my brother, however, who has allergies, cannot even be close to it when it bleeds. Uh, so make sure that um, you know that always when you buy a ficus, and that is almost any type of ficus plant, it's not just a lirota. If you have a lot of allergies, maybe this is not the plant for you because it will bleed at some point and then you could get some problems. But usually when it's not bleeding, it's not a problem for anyone. Uh, I, I haven't found, uh, we've heard I've, he I've actually heard about one person that couldn't stand being a, in a room with a ficus variety. Uh, because it could get, they, he could get an allergic reaction to it, but that's very, very, very rare. Okay, before I let you go, uh, I have a little fun fact for you, a, a little a tip that you can use if you want to, and uh, this is something that I've only used twice myself, uh, and when you've had the fiddle leaf fig for a long time, the leaves usually get a little bit dull. They lose their shininess. And that's fully natural because it's not standing in a greenhouse. It's not getting the humidity it wants. It's not, it's not getting every, everything. So it's going to look a little bit dull. What people usually do then is that they buy some form of uh, spraying, um, we call it uh, blood glans in, in Swedish, but leaf shine, I think it's called in English. Let's say it's called leaf shine. You spray this on the plant and it gets shiny again. But 
what you're actually doing is that when you're adding that leaf shine to the leaves, then the dust settles on the leaves and it mixes with this leaf shine that you've put on. And it almost acts like a glue. And it glues together the pores on the plant. So what you're doing, uh, what you're actually doing is you're making it worse for the plant. But there is a natural way to get the shininess back on the leaves. And that is actually to use banana peel. When you've eaten your banana, you just use the peel from the banana and the inside of that peel, you take that and you rub that on the plant. And it will make the, the shininess to come back a little bit on the plant. Now, don't rub too much of the banana peel on it because you know, we all know what happens when we leave some banana peel out for a long period of time. It starts to get moldy and it's, it starts to smell and it attracts, it attracts banana flies. So don't put on a lot. Just rub it very gently on the plant like this. Uh, just a couple of rubs per leaf and that's fine. And then you won't get any problem with flies or anything. But if you put on too much, that could be a problem. But this is a very natural way, a very easy way to get the shininess back on the leaves. Now that's everything for today. If you like these kinds of videos, please don't hesitate to subscribe. That helps us a lot. Please make a comment as well and hit that bell so that you will get a notification every time we put up something new. Now, of course, we want you to help us by telling us which type of plants do you have in your home and what do you want us to talk about. So just leave that in the comments down below. Uh, we read every comment, so we will, and hopefully we will make a video on that specific plant. Now that's everything for today. Hi, Doc.